Hello everybody and welcome to Bookmakers TV YouTube channel. I am Gav from the LFC Day Trippers and I'm joined by Liam Canning um, to my left and Jamie from Daily Hotspur to my right. This show is a Premier League preview show and as luck may have it, um, the FA Cup this weekend so there's no Premier League so um, we're going to gloss over that very very quickly and we're going to talk about the FA Cup this weekend. Um, Liam is a Manchester United fan, Jamie of course is a sports fan and I am a Liverpool fan so um, it could get heated as this goes on throughout the weeks and we face each other at the weekends and stuff like that but for the moment we're okay with this FA Cup draw. Um, Liam I'm going to come to you first, you're very welcome, Um, great to have you you on. Um, Are you looking forward to the FA Cup, does it still give you that buzz? Do you know what it actually does? And I've not said sort of in the last five, six years, anything gives me a buzz as Manchester United fan all too often <laughs> because of just the dire results that we've had over the years. But new managers come in over the summer, reset the culture of the club. We've seen that over the last few months. Um, and I just think, especially before Christmas and now just coming into January, good results coming, you know, United's way. Uh, the whole Ronaldo debacle has, has left. You know, he's gone elsewhere. He's gone to Saudi and left the club. I think that's a good thing on the whole. I think... We've got to take the wins where we can get them this season. And the FA Cup might just bring that. Like the EFL Cup on, on Tuesday night against Charlton. That's another big one for United, even though it's the EFL Cup. I think you've got to take every cup seriously. And yes, there's fixture congestion for Manchester United coming up. I think in January and February, it's just packed out Tuesday, Saturday, you know, twice a week minimum at the moment. But a poor looking Everton side under Frank Lampard, uh, there for the taking under the lights of Old Trafford tomorrow night. So I think every Manchester United fan is looking forward to it. Uh, there was bound to be a bit of rotation in the squad, of course, but you'd expect them to win and, and hopefully put on a good result or good performance. So. Yeah, and we're going to get to United and Everton later and we'll get some predictions from all of us, I suppose. And you're right in what you say. I think United are turning a corner. And um, I kind of I, I liken that Ronaldo leaving United a bit like Aubameyang leaving Arsenal, where Arteta needed to do something and stomp yeah. his foot. And Ten Hag probably had to do the same. Jamie Spores... Um, and we're going to get on to these in a bit more detail later but Spurs the FA Cup you know um, Spurs for long considered a cup team for some reason I don't know why but um, you know in different form you did say to me before we come on that you're glad we, we come on tonight and not um, to one or two nights ago when, when a defeat at home to Aston Villa but as a Spurs fan do you go into this and you go you know what we're always around top four we probably can't win the league you mm. have to get a trophy in the cabinet, especially in this new stadium. Yeah, well, look, look, first, as you said, you know, Spurs were considered to be this cup team. But um, unfortunately, given the fact that our recent history has been so poor and it's been so long since we've won a trophy, um, obviously 2008 was, was the last time we seen uh, we won a trophy. Um, you know, it's uh, we, we, we were in the past previously, you know, the FA Cup was a, was a competition that Spurs were always very successful in. There was even one point, believe it or not, when we won it the most times. Um, 1991, we won it a record eight, uh, eighth time. Um, but obviously, it's just been so long since we've kind of had that that cup success. And, um, you know, for me personally, I say that I've only seen us win one domestic cup in, in my entire lifetime. So, you know, I haven't really had that buzz of, of that experience of what it's like to to have that special moment of winning FA Cup. So, for me, it's, it's kind of difficult to say that I'm, I'm really excited for the FA Cup. But, you know, it has got to a point now where Spurs desperately need that that trophy because obviously it's that thing that's now hanging over us constantly and I think that it's almost become a bit of a mental block for Spurs you know we've seen at times where you know we, we've kind of been up there and we look like we're going to win something but it's just kind of that that last final bit where it doesn't seem to be that belief around the club that we can actually get over the line and do it so I think you know winning a, maybe winning a trophy like the FA Cup and, and finally getting over the line might give these players confidence might give the hot club the club as a whole confidence so I do still think it's very important. The problem is, I don't think the club see it like that. And I think that that's maybe why we haven't won trophies. I think the club very much are about getting into that top four, having that sort of revenue. And they've always prioritised um, making sure, as I said, getting into European football. Um, and that's why they, they, you know, almost the the, um, the cup competitions are almost discarded by most of the managers. Antonio Conte even this week has, has kind of come out and said, you know, for Spurs, the aim is as crazy as it sounds, to um, do well in the Premier League and, and competing for those titles. Obviously, we're a long way off doing that. But, um, 
yeah, almost our current manager even d discard in that competition already. So that kind of seems to be the the kind of the culture at the club really is to kind of discard these trophies. But look, as, as us supporters, we want to see us do well in these these competitions. Um, lots of Spurs fans growing up would have known, you know, great FA Cup success, but now it's just been so long. So yeah, as I said, it just feels like the culture at the club is is kind of make sure we're doing well in terms of qualifying for the Champions League. Um, but we now want to see trophies. We want success. And um, yeah, let's see. Obviously, it's, it's a nice start. I think we've got a fairly good start here in, in a game against Portsmouth at home. It's a game I think we should be getting off to a good start in this competition. But you never know, I suppose. You never know. Yeah, you, you, you never know. <laughs> you never know where a lot of clubs in the FA Cup because you don't know what way they're going to line up. And when, when FA Cup tour, tour round weekend comes up or it's on the way, you, you see a lot of nostalgia stuff online don't you you know like the 70s and the 80s and I know I'm a big advocate for going back to putting them all on Saturdays at 3 o'clock and opening it up to as many TV channels as you can free to air and let people watch them I'm also a big fan of making a Champions League place available for the FA Cup winners I think you know the money's not there with regards to the FA Cup win but that prize would rocket this competition again and it's lost it's lost its appeal um, for a lot of people I still like it and I still like it, but if Liverpool go out and kind of yeah, now Liverpool won both the domestic cups last year. But if Liverpool go out with this, I'm I'm, you know, I'm kind of going top four because Liverpool last season were chasing everything. But if they go out, I I still watch a bit of it, especially if a lower league team gets through or there's a there's a big Premier League game on. So it's it's kind of a mix for me. But obviously, if your team stays in it, your your interest grows. I, I I would say you're right, though, in terms of having that extra incentive of getting into the Champions League. I just mm. said there about how Spurs, you know, our priority is getting into that top four. But look, if you if you had that opportunity to qualify for the Champions League through the FA Cup, then all of a sudden teams are going to be taking it a lot more seriously, yeah. and it's going to become and the money big... would actually the money would go up in it because the exactly. the interest would come up. Teams would have to play, you know, forced elevens or would well, <clears> you <throat> presume they would. But then again, you know, the, the big teams might still go. Yeah, but you know what? The league is where it is because the league, even for a place in the Premier League now, it's an extra two and three million quid for every place you go up. Or it's it's colossal money. But look, we, we get into it, right? And we, we get the games and we do some predictions. And what we're going to do is, for this series, as we're, as we're going along weekly, I'm going to take the four games that we talk about. I'm going to take your prediction and we'll have a point system on it. And I'll, I'll produce a table every week and we can we can slag each other over or whatever um, <laughs> as the time goes. But... We're going to start with um, City versus Chelsea. Now, at the time of recording, Chelsea are at home to City. I think mm. it's nil all at the moment. But um, as as they are playing in the Premier League, as we are recording, but it's reversed at the weekend where City will host Chelsea. All right. Now, Liam, I'm going to come to you first because yep. straight off the bat, it's the it's the obvious question: What way do these teams approach this? City. Are eight points behind Arsenal going into tonight in the Premier League, so they are absolutely focused on that, and they'll be absolutely focused on the Champions League. For me, this is probably where City throw whatever team they can, and Pep will tell you he's no players because that's what he usually does. And Chelsea really need something to get going in the league to get top four. Does this look to you like it's going to be second string eleven, even though it's a, two big names in the Premier League? You say second string eleven though, but yeah, yeah, I know. I know. City is still an unbelievable yeah, yeah. eleven, and that and that's why I think they'll win. You know, I'll give my prediction in a minute, but I think City would just have too much quality. You know, the, the depth of quality is unimaginable for ninety percent of teams around the world. It's just remarkable, and I know Chelsea have spent you know two hundred fifty mil or three hundred mil since Todd Bowley's come in as, as owner of the club. But they're sort of focused on young talents at the moment, so perhaps not at the same level that City's players are when they poured in hundreds of millions of investment um, over our sort of decade. But yeah, I think going into this one, I know they're focused on the Premier League. Of course they are. They want to close that gap on Arsenal, um, but they have too much quality. I mean, Foden, I know he started tonight, but since then he hadn't started before the World Cup, mm. you know, uh, for a number of games and he hadn't started after the, after the World Cup either. So he, he's, he's bound to get a run out as well. Um, Cancelo's come back into the team tonight. You'd imagine De Bruyne gets a rest, but Gundogan and Rodri can pick up the pieces or Cole Palmer can come in there or Bernardo. So, I mean, they've just got too many players that, as I said, you say he's second string. It's not real at all. Um, so, yeah, I, I, if I give my prediction, I'm going sort of 3-1 City. I actually think it'd be quite a big win. I know they've struggled in the first half as, as we're recording this against Chelsea, Stamford Bridge. But at home, I think 
they'll um, be they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Three one City, and and I think you make a great point. You know, City's second string eleven. Despite yeah. what Guardiola will tell you at times, you know, I've no players left. He's done this before the League Cup game, um, against Does Liverpool, where yeah, where he was like, I've, I've I've literally I'm only picking what I have, and we're like, mate, you've yeah. seven players that play every week in this lineup, um, but that's just how Guardiola is. I kind of find it amusing at times. Uh, Jamie, on the other hand. Chelsea, I think fifth, about seventh in the Premier League. They need yeah. they need a couple of results to go for them for them to kind of get back on track and level with who's around third, fourth, and fifth really at the moment. Yeah. Um, but they have an owner now that you know they're American owners. He might say, "I've spent a lot of money here. I want something in return. I want some sort yeah. of return." And we talk so much about going back 15, 16, 17 years now when Mourinho took over at Chelsea. And he he cites the League Cup win in two thousand and um, four against Liverpool. Um, sorry, two thousand and five against yeah. Liverpool as a real, you know, massive moment in 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 Chelsea and the whole evolution of Chelsea. Could they see it the same, or do you think no? They'll end up going much like City do, and like Liam says, City's quality will probably yeah. probably um, win out in the end. Well, that, there, there is. I mean, I think with City's quality, as you said, and, and the depth they've got, you know, we've, we've obviously everyone knows how good they are. But I think with Chelsea as well, I, again, it just comes back to Champions League qualification. That's always the priority for the, these top six clubs. They have to be in the Champions League. That's where the money is at. That's where the revenue is. That's what all these owners want. So I still think that Chelsea, regardless of where their position is in the league and uh, you know, maybe they are going to be, you know, quite a, a, quite a distance away from it. I still think their focus is going to be on that. Um, you then got to factor in that Chelsea come into this game with lots of injuries tonight. We've already seen them have uh, the, the likes of, I think, Christian Pulisic go off injured. We've seen Raheem Sterling go off injured. And obviously, that's already a very long list of injuries that they've got to, to, that's now added to. I think Rhys James is obviously out. Um, Kante's out. And, and I know several others are out as well. So that's going to be a real issue. And, and Chelsea are down to the bare bones. Man City, they've obviously they're going to have an opportunity to kind of rotate and and actually we obviously saw these two sides meet in the, in the Carabao Cup. I think it was last month or um, back in November, and it was it was a two 0 win for Man City, and um, it was just because that you know the the difference in quality of, of um, Chelsea's of uh, Man City's second eleven and Chelsea's second eleven, and I, I think we're going to see pretty much a, a similar game here. I think I, I can see there's only going to be one winner here. And I, and I'd say as well, I think Chelsea have had a real issue with scoring goals. I mean, obviously, mm. I think a lot's been made about um, Erling Haaland, 21 league goals this season. Chelsea as a whole have got 20. So, um, yeah, I think that that will be a, a, an issue as well that we might see on the on the weekend between these two teams. And Chelsea's lack of goals as well. I think that that might, might play a part and uh, might play a part in my uh, prediction as well. OK, so I'm, I'm going to go for 2-1 to see. Okay. I think it'd be tighter than than Liam says three one. I'm gonna go two one. I think it'd be these games can become either brilliant because of you, you know these lineups. Even though they train every day with each other, they're not on the yeah. pitch an awful lot with each other, or, or they can become very patchy. You know, but I think I kind of go towards the patchiness part of it, and I'm gonna go two one. Go on, give me a prediction for this one. Yeah, I've said I feel as though Chelsea are really missing goals, and I still think that Manchester City, as we keep saying, they're going to be able to put out a strong team. So I'm going to go for two 0 to to Man City. Two 0 to Man City, good stuff. Um, we're going to move on to our second game in a minute, but I want some um, predictions from you, um, for a couple of games here, right? So Liam, I'm going to let you go first. Yeah, I'm going to give you two games. You can give me your two predictions. You're not going to score any points in these. These aren't the these aren't the point winning or point scoring games. So, but they're just interesting ones that I've seen. Um. Oxford v Arsenal. Oxford v Arsenal. That's at Oxford, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Monday night. Arsenal focused on the league. Got weekend. They've got some big fixtures, haven't they? City coming yeah. up and, and United coming yeah. up. I want my, my heart says I yeah. want an FA Cup upset. You know, that's what I want. I want Oxford to, to get a result. But I, I think Arsenal just have too much quality and, and too good spirits at the moment. So I'm going I'm going two 0 Arsenal. Okay. And I think Arsenal do their Europa League kind of jig on this. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what that that's the way they look at it. Um but yeah, that that's quite good. I'll stay with you. Um Palace versus Southampton. Wow. Both I, I, I think Palace are gonna end sorry, I think Palace are gonna end up one of those teams that will be okay, 
from relegation in the Premier League, oh, yeah. but sure. won't go anywhere near Europe. So no. this is these are the sort of teams I look yeah. for in the in the FA Cup, yeah. and they need a win because they've had a couple of bad defeats um, yeah. recently, which will which I'm sure Jamie will tell us about in a minute. But Palace versus yeah. Southampton. Yeah, Palace coming off a loss to, to Tottenham the other night, um, in pretty dramatic effect. And, but Southampton is just absolutely dreadful, absolutely yeah. awful, and they will be a team that will just be focused on the league. They have to survive. Mm-hmm. They're, they're sitting bottom, I think, of the table at the moment. Um, with some difficult fixtures on the way. So I, I think Palace will take it seriously, as you say. Um, I'm going 2-1 two one, two one Palace. OK. I'm going to get back to a couple of those quick quick ones with Jamie in a little bit. But um, game two um, that we're going to speak about is um, Liverpool against Wolves. And I'm going to let you two speak about them first because I am a Liverpool fan, so I won't um, I won't jump in and try sway on this. But Liverpool against Wolves are Anfield. Um Jamie, I'm going to come to you first because Wolves, like Southampton and Liam have said, are struggling down there. But I think they're showing signs already that um, they they should be okay. They have enough quality, especially in midfield for me, where they should be okay in the Premier League. But yeah. again, that they don't want to go out and get injuries and they, they big, they'll have big fixtures coming up. Because come the end of February, you don't want to be in there around that mix because you just get dragged in. It's like quicksand yeah. in the Premier League. Liverpool, on the other hand, um, you know, fifth in the table at the moment. Beaten by Brentford the other day um, were awful. Let's be perfectly honest about it. We're absolutely awful. Brentford were really, really good. Um, and have a couple of injuries. What way do you see them doing? What way do you see both teams approaching this? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be an interesting one. Again, I still think that Liverpool will certainly have their eye on the Premier League and, and maybe they will look to rotate. I think for Wolves, this could be a really interesting opportunity. I think they've made a good start under Julian Lopetegui. Um, I think, you know, they have shown signs of improvement. I think they obviously got that win against Everton late on. Um, and it's, it's been a pretty good start for them. So, you know, they might have come into this with a bit of confidence. Of course, Liverpool as well, you know, the confidence is going to be low for Liverpool at the moment. I think it was that. It was a really bad defeat. Of, I think it was in the game before that against Leicester. I think there was maybe a slight bit of fortune with that one. It didn't feel as though Liverpool... Oh, it, was more, totally, it was more than slow. I can, it was... It, there I was a, certainly... With, the, with that one, it was... Yeah, it did feel like there was a bit of error of fortune about that win for Liverpool against Leicester as well. So, you know, as much as it was, was still a bit of a shock that, that Brentford managed to, to beat Liverpool... You know, it does feel like it had been a result that's been coming and, and, and Liverpool has had their fair share of injuries as well. I think Van Dijk is, is a is a big loss. And again, just having that that in the back of the minds, I think that that's certainly going to dent confidence and, and uh, you know, dampen the mood at Anfield. So it's it's a really interesting one. I do kind of want to, I do want to sway towards the Liverpool win here because it's at home. I think, again, as much as, you know, um, Wolves have made improvements under Lopetegui, they're still really struggling for goals. And you look at that team, I don't really see where that's going to really cut improve. There's no kind of real goal scoring threat in that team. Obviously, Raul Jimenez is there, but, you know, we know he's not been quite the same player. Um, so it's, it's such a difficult one to call. Um, I, I probably would slay, sway more towards Wolves here because I just think there is maybe that, that confidence, um, you know, that confidence in this Wolves team under the new manager. And, and for Liverpool, I said it's it's just it's it's very difficult to know how they how they're going to go at the moment. I said that it's, it's in terms of confidence, it seems to be a complete opposite of those two clubs at the moment. Go on, I'll take your prediction before we we want to leave. It's very difficult. I wanted to go. I said I wanted to go for a Liverpool win. Like, maybe I can see an upset here. I might. I'm going to go for two one to to Wolves. Um, it's it, I, I probably have changed my thought on this. Um, but I said, I just think that I think Van Dijk um, getting injured, I know maybe he might not have featured, but I just think that that's the way everything's been going. I think to have that compounded is, is, is um, you know, certainly going to dent confidence even more. And maybe the feel good factor at Liverpool is kind of gone at the moment or it's not there. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go for, <laughs> unfortunately, I'm going to go for a 2 1 win. Oh, it's not unfortunate. That's absolutely your take. <laughs> um, Liam. <clears throat> Same questions, same. As much as, you know, I'm a United fan, I want to see Liverpool go out with all the cups and all the competitions. I just can't see that happening. Not at, not Anfield. If you'd said this was at Molyneux, you know, in an evening game under the lights with the crowd and the atmosphere get, get a bit raucous, I think you've got more chance of seeing a Wolves win here. But at Anfield, even without Van Dijk, even with Nunes not sort of on, on firing, um, on his firing element at the moment, I still think Liverpool have too much. And, and I know they'll probably rotate and the midfield has been hammered all season long. I know all that. <clears throat> um, but I just don't, as you know, as we've said there, I just don't see where Wolves score. You know, they don't score goals. I think they scored the least amount of goals in the Premier League this season. Ten all season. 
Yeah, sure. it's just a shocking amount. And and you're right, Lopetegui has inspired a bit of confidence in that team. And against Manchester United, they played really well and they were probably unlucky not to get a result, if I'm honest, um, at least to draw out of the game. But they don't really create a lot at all. Um, and I just think Liverpool do create. If you look at Nunes, yes, I know he misses a hell of a lot of chances, but they create so many chances through him because he's always in the right place at the right time. He's, he's a great centre forward. He just needs to find his scoring boots and then it'll all start clicking for him. Um, so I'm actually going to go the opposite. I'm going to go Liverpool to win 2-0 and, and I think it'll actually be quite comfortable for them in the end. Okay. Um, the thing for me with this one is it's all about how teams go with this and I kind of get the feeling Wolves will go strong. Although they're down the bottom, it's a new manager and he's probably trying to instill his way of playing and he probably sees it as a good advantage that it's the FA Cup, he's nothing to lose going to Anfield, regardless of what form Liverpool are in. He's nothing to lose by going there, playing a really strong side and if he comes away with a 2 nil defeat but he's got them playing the way he wants to because he has got, um, definitely brought in Cunha as well um, yeah. And Diego Costa's about the place, Paul. And st- they actually have good attackers. It just seems yeah. not, it seems to be an awful lot of possession stuff that goes on with Wolves and mm-hmm. um, with those lads in midfield. I think he might go stronger than people think. Now, as opposed to Southampton, who might just go, listen, we need to sort ourselves out in the Premier League. And we're playing all load of kids, and that's just the way it is. Um, Liverpool, though, will definitely play Kelleher and goal. He's the cup goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. Um, what they do with centre half is interesting because with Van Dijk out and the talk is it could be anything from two to six weeks, you're now left with three centre backs. One that's just back from the World Cup, one that's injury prone in Matip, and another one that is low in confidence in Joe Gomez. So it's where do you go with that? Who do you put in the centre back to A, try to win a game, but B, protect yourself for those Premier League? So it's going to be a real mismatch of a team for me from Liverpool. I think they're going to risk in certain areas. And I think they're not going to risk in others. So you'll see the likes of Stefan Bacetic will come in and play in midfield. I definitely think Nunes will play because I think he's been really good for Liverpool. I just think, like, he he, he rounds the keeper against Brentford and does where any other striker in the world does, hits a straight at the goal. And Ben Mee appears out of nowhere, right? He's actually offside for a goal, which is a really good finish. I just think he's been unfortunate. And maybe in the back of his head, he's thinking, I need to score this because we're conceding goals at the round. We're not, we're not looking great. So I think Liverpool will... Cody Gakbo might get a, 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 a debut as well. It'll be a real mismatch, and I think it'll be a tight game. I'm going to go 2-1 Liverpool as well, because I think the lack of goals in, in Wolves is a great point. Liverpool do get chances. I think Wolves will score. I think if that's my bet of the weekend, Wolves will score at Anfield. is nailed on for me. So I'm going to go 2-1 for Liverpool. And overall, they go through great, but I'd love to see a Nunes goal, and I'd love to see a Joe Gomez have a really good show at say centre back and that'd be enough for me you know where you go good there good that end of the pitch good that end of the pitch that, that'll that be enough for me at the moment because confidence is low at Liverpool the midfield is being pilloried let's be honest about it and, and to a certain extent rightfully so um, mm. but and they just can't seem to find the players are the players are good but they can't find a way of playing with the players that they have available and they need to make Changes that in January or the summer, but um, I'll I'll stick to one Liverpool because Jesus, like my family won't talk to me if I, yeah. if, I predict, uh, if I predict Liverpool to lose. Um, Jamie, I'm going to come to you because I've, I've two games here that I want mm-hmm. quick analysis on and, and and some predictions. So Brentford v West Ham. Yeah, um, I mean, look, Brentford obviously playing really well at the moment. You know, we've seen them in the last three Premier League matches. Of course, a win away at Manchester City, which was amazing. Um, you know, obviously got the draw against my team Spurs. I thought they were very impressive in that first half and, um, you know, playing some great football, uh, you know, and then of course they did get that win against Liverpool as well. So, you know, to have picked up seven points from from a possible nine against those three teams, it just shows you what kind of confidence they're playing with at the moment. Then of course, you know, we've seen Thomas Frank renew his contract. So, you know, they're really, you know, it's really kind of a, a great feel good factor at the moment for, for them at the moment, Brentford. And, it's the complete opposite at West Ham. I mean, I think it's something like six, it was almost six defeats in a row or something uh, prior to that draw against Leeds. Um, so they're in a really difficult way at the moment. And, um, you know, they certainly will be gunning for the for the Premier League. I mean, we keep saying, I've kept on saying, you know, teams are going to be gunning for the Premier League, going for the top four. But for West Ham, obviously, 
it's going to be all about kind of staying up at the moment. They're, they're in a real bad situation, West Ham. So, um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm, I'm definitely going to go for Brentford here. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for a, a 2 0 win for, for Brentford. I think, you know, we've obviously seen the, seen these two sides meet recently. It was a, you know, win at the, the London Stadium for, for Brentford. And, uh, I do think they'll win a, win again, win this one as well. Okay. And, um, Sheffield Wednesday versus Newcastle. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be an interesting one because I think, you know, this is this one's away for Newcastle. Um, so th- this could be a very interesting one and potentially an upset here. Um, and again, Newcastle are fully going to be focused. Keep on having a set. Yeah. Newcastle are certainly going to be a team that are focused on the, on the, on the league. Um, and maybe that might take a, you know, a bit of a distraction away from them. But I, I just can't back it at the moment. I can't back an upset here. I still think that Newcastle are playing so well. I think they'll still have kind of the, the strong enough team to go out here and win at Hillsborough. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna stick with Newcastle here because they're playing magnificent football at the moment. Um, so, I'm going to go for... I'm gonna go for I'm gonna go for one nil Newcastle. I think it's gonna be a tough game for them, and and as well, I mean they, they've kind of maybe slowed up in the goals department. Obviously, they you know failed to score in the last two. Yes, of course they were they were at the Emirates, um, but home to Leeds they failed to score. I think you know they uh, they did score a couple against Leicester, but in the games before that it was like you know maybe a one nil win or um, so goals have been kind of a bit slow for them at the moment. So. I think away from home as well. I think this is going to be a win, but I think it's going to be a hard fought one. So yeah, one nil to Newcastle here. Lovely stuff. Um, let's move on to game three because I know Liam is dying to get onto this. So here we go. Um, Manchester United against Everton. Liam, you spoke about it earlier, where yeah. you thought Everton were there for the taking. Um, yeah. I've been sp- speaking to a couple of Everton fans over the last couple of days because believe it or not, you know. As much as I'm here to rivals and stuff like that, it's just the club that intrigues me. Um, more or less how they carry on the way they do and how long will it go on for before they finally just, you know, the bottom falls out of it. But for United, they're going into this, they're in a good vein of form. Players are finding form. Maybe it's a chance to bring a couple in and, you know, rest a few. Harry sure. Maguire gets another game, stuff like that, whatever it might be. But surely whatever United put out with this... Um, in this game is enough to beat Everton because Everton are most definitely you see do Everton approach it where I suppose the big thing is do Everton approach this like we need to put a strong team and get a result to save Frank Lampard or do we need to prioritise this league where we're in serious serious trouble either way I think it's a good thing for United yeah I, I think the Everton owners and well fans <clears throat> should be thinking in a way that it's a throwaway you know, it is a throwaway for them. Mm. They should not be really prioritising the FA Cup. Fantastic if they get a result. Unbelievable for them if they do. But when you're so far down the table and you're getting beaten by Brighton 4-1 at home, mm. you know, in the week in the Premier League, you've got to be thinking of bigger things here, which is staying in the league. Um, so it wouldn't surprise me if Everton went strong. You know, I don't I don't mean, you know, 100% strongest team on the pitch, but, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if 75% of their team are first-team starters. As you see, I think United will rotate. Um, I think there will be players who have lacked confidence in the past before the World Cup, after the World Cup, that will come in to the team. You know, Maguire, one of them. I know he started last week, um, but it, he should be back in um, for this one. Lindelof might get another game there. Luke Shaw needs a rest, so Malassi is likely to come in at left back. wan has been doing well at right back, but Dallow now needs some minutes after coming back from injury, so there might be some shared minutes there. Um and then, you know, you want rotation up in, in the sort of the front end of the pitch. But in terms of centre-forwards, there aren't many that Manchester United have, you know, in the actual squad to rotate yeah. with. Martial picked up a knock, um, but he, he's likely to be back. But he might be on reduced minutes for 60 minutes, you know, and then, and then have to come off. Rashford should get a bit of a rest. He needs one, I think. Um, and then Garnacho and Elanga are likely to come in. So... Yeah, I think it'll be 50-50 over what, in terms of what United put out in, in, in side of strength of, of team. But there shouldn't be any doubt, no matter what team goes out there, that they won't beat Everton. You know, they have to beat them. There is no doubt about that. And I just mm. think Old Trafford, Friday night, crowd should be up for it. Six wins on the bounce, I think, will be a great, great, you know, great um, atmosphere around the stadium. Good Good vibes that Ten Hag has had, you know, at United over the last couple of weeks, especially how he's handled the Ronaldo situation. I keep coming back to that, but it's yeah, a, huge. A, a real, you know, feather in his bow um, about how he's done that. So mm. I just think 
the fans have fully bought into Ten Hag um, and play should be rocking and bouncing. So I, did I mention my prediction earlier or have I got to give one? No, I, I think you, you, you were going to, but then you didn't. So we're going to take okay. it off you now. Let me go for, I'll go 3-1 United. 3-1 I think United. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just looking up United's fixtures because they actually played Charlton in the League Cup then on Tuesday. Right. So yeah. it's probably a good way of, you mm. know, playing half a squad now and half a squad Tuesday because then the next couple of games are City at home and Arsenal away and um, back to back. So, you know, it'll probably, it's probably a way for United to keep themselves fresh and momentum. And if anything does happen, players have had minutes where they can bring them back and, and play in those big games. Um, Jamie, like on Everton, I think Liam is spot on. I think, you know, I think, okay, you know, Everton are mad, but they're not that mad to think that they can mm. go to Old Trafford <laughs> And should risk their first eleven, yeah. You know, before massive league games coming up. Like, can you see them just putting out uh, maybe five or six force teamers that you know like playing every minute of every game, and then throw a couple around that and see what happens? Because, like, genuinely, mm-hmm. they're moving into a new stadium, and you can't get anything more disastrous than being relegated three months yeah. before you walk into a new stadium. Yeah, they're, they're obviously in a really bad way at the moment, Everton, and, you know, just kind of can't catch a break at the moment. But look, I, I think for Frank Lampard's situation, given the, you know, that heavy defeat against Brighton at home, which was just, um, you know, almost leaves his job untenable, I don't think he can afford another bad result. And he'll, he'll know that. And I think that he'll go for this game. I think he'll put out a strong team. I think we'll pretty much see a full strength Everton team just simply because he can't afford to another bad defeat. And, um, Manchester United absolutely flying at the moment. And, uh, you know, as Liam said, I think that place is going to be rocking. Everyone's bought into what Eric, Eric Ten Hag's doing. You know, again, Liam spoke about the changes that they can make. And, you know, you're bringing in still strong players. I mean, Malassia obviously is impressed at times this season. Um, you know, he mentioned Dalo might come into the team. Obviously, a guy who's done very well, obviously coming back from injuries. So, you know, even when Man United are going to rotate, I think still think they're going to be strong. Um and yeah, I just think the vibe around Manchester United is um, is obviously really good at the moment. So yeah, I, th- I think this is going to be an, a, a pretty emphatic win for Manchester United. I think Everton are going to go for it. Um, I look at Everton's next fixture. They've got a week until they play. So I don't think there's too many concerns about, um, you know, having to rest players. So as I said, I think Everton will go for it, but I still think Man United are going to be too strong. And I do think it'll be an emphatic win for, for, um, for Man United. How emphatic? I'm going to go 3 0 emphatic. I think it's going to be a yeah, clean sheet and uh, plenty of goals. Okay. Um, I'm looking up Everton's fixtures then. And, you know, I think if they haven't sacked Lampard after the Brighton defeat, I don't see why they would sack him after this FA Cup game, regardless. You know, and he probably knows that and he probably's going to write this off. You know, Everton, you know, haven't won a if trophy since 1995. So it's, and they'd love to win a trophy, but that's not the priority right now. Like, Everton need to stay in this league. Like, or they're, that that stadium what? that's worth a lot of money is his championship stadium and that's just that's just horrific um for from an Everton point of view financially um above anything else I suppose but if you look at it like there's so many big games and when you look at it no, I like, mean Southampton next is so at home cool. and then West Ham away is their next two yeah. which is like yeah. literally two six pointers um yeah. as you would call it they then travel to Liverpool um home to Leeds home to Villa. And then they get into Forest, Brentford, Chelsea as it goes on into March and stuff like that. But you know, for me, if they're gonna, if they were gonna sack him, they would have. I don't know if they can afford to sack him because I think he's on a big contract and he's it's, mm. it's a lengthy contract. And who comes in? You know, I've seen Sean Dyche mentioned and I'm kind of saying to myself, he got relegated last last season with yeah. a Burnley team that are better than this Everton team. To be perfectly honest with you, I would say I could be better and more together. So I think they're not gonna sack him, um, regardless of this game. But when I look at United. Liam's right, maybe up front, centre forward wise is where they probably lack and that's what they might look to do in January in some sort of way. But yeah. you know, they can they can switch it around and you know, you could probably end up with a Fred McTominay midfield or I don't know yeah. if they're both fit, but you know, something along them lines. Malassia, Delo, it could be McGuire and Lindelof again. That's fairly yeah. solid. You put a goalkeeper in goal, they'll find somebody up around midfield and up front because they've they've numbers there. And you know, you'd always have youngsters like they're well known for having youngsters on the bench for. I think they've had an academy graduate for about a hundred years on the bench, <laughs> um, every game. So they'll have enough there, I think, to, to be everything. Um, three nil, I think. I think. What do you say, Jamie? Three nil. I'm gonna go yeah. the same. 
I'm not yeah. going to go 3-0 Everton because or 3-0 United you know, because I just think Everton will turn up there and won't show much and we'll yeah. probably be thinking already to Southampton which will be eight days later so that's where I'm going to go with that the other problem I'd say the other problem for Everton as well is is knowing what direction they're going to go in with with the new manager and maybe that's what's kind of they're delaying at the moment we said there's very little kind of managers that clearly that are clearly available and, and uh, like a clear candidate you know it's what direction they go in do they get in a manager who's who's kind of got that experience of trying to keep teams in the division you know because that doesn't really feel long term Everton are a club that you know should be competing for very at the minimum kind of competing for that top 10 so it's going to be interesting to kind of see, you know, the decision that they go with. Do they kind of bring in a manager that knows how to stay, in, as, stay as I said, stay in the division, avoid relegation? Or do they bring in maybe a manager who's less proven, but someone who might have higher potential to kind of take them back to the top 10? So that's a big decision they've got to make at the moment in terms of what direction they're going to go in with that new manager. And as I said, there's obviously not many available either. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do next. Yeah, hmm. I, I, I think probably, sorry, just to jump yeah. in there, I think they probably had a look at Southampton as well and thought, you know, they've just sacked Hazen Hootsel, brought in Nathan Jones, and they've not had a manager kick. Yeah. You know, they've had nothing. Mm. In fact, they've probably got worse. Yeah. So yeah. they're probably hedging their bets to think, yeah, I know, you look, Frank's not doing a, an amazing job. He's not pulling up trees. But to uproot him, pay him off big money, as you said earlier, on his, on his contract, and try and find somewhere where options are not readily available, apart from Sean Dyche, perhaps, it's a massive risk. Where you know it's to a penny, you know, on, on either side, but it's just, it's just, what do you do? So I, I agree, though, that if they were to sack Frank, it should have been after the Bryson game, I think. And yeah, and I think there's so many issues here. I think it financially to sack Lampard, right? But then, you know, who's gonna like? All right, there's, there's managers out there that will take their their pound of flesh and their money and and get six months out and take a lot of money over. But mm. realistically, so if you do that. Okay, and you go that, down that route and you still get relegated, then your ownership looks even worse to the fans mm. because you've paid some guy a load of money that was never going to be there and yeah. it still ended up the same. And then if you take someone that signs a three year deal and they get relegated, right? It's like, well, does this three year deal still stand? You know, unless you're preparing for the championship where he's going, we're going to stick with him. And then you have yeah. players looking, going, you had Lampard, you got rid of him, this guy for six months. It's such a difficult position to be in. And I don't know if they get out of it. Like, I speak to Everton fans all the time, and there's one guy in particular, and he's just like, we're going down. <laughs> and he keeps using the word inevitable, which is, um, you know, weird to hear from him, but that's the way it goes. Um, our fourth big game of the weekend, um, and it's it's Jamie's mob this time. It's Spurs against Portsmouth. And, you know, this looks, I think, out of maybe all the games involving air teams, this looks the kindest. Um, mm. But... Do they go strong, Jamie? And I know this is a recurring question, but do they go strong and say to yourself, you know what, just get it, get through this round, and you never because in the FA Cup you already toured for fifth round, but before you know it, all these games are mixed in midweek and all, and in, in the league next where you're looking going, that's a quarter final of an FA Cup, and Spurs mm. need something like this. They, they, you were right what you said earlier, get over the line, and I seen this with Liverpool to a lesser extent. I think we're under Jurgen Klopp lost a couple of finals. You're like, are we kind of? Is this yeah. kind of always going to happen? And then once yeah. we got one, it just kept coming and coming and coming. So is it a balancing act for sports here? Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting one. This I, I'm going to say it's right away. I do think that Spurs will play a rotated 11. Um, I think Antonio Conte, as I said, he's kind of made it very clear that his priority is to kind of focus on the league, doing well in, the, in maybe the bigger competitions. Of course, we're in the Champions League as well. Obviously, that's some way off. I mean, for me, I'd, I'd love to see us kind of go and put out on a strong team. I mean, we've got a week until we play Arsenal as well. So, you know, you have got that break as much as I've obviously been saying with some of these teams, you know, maybe a chance to rotate. Well, look, they've, they've got a week off almost. So, you know, go and put out a strong team. I think the issue with Spurs, we do have a couple of, of key injuries at the moment and that has depleted our squads. So, you know, maybe rotation is going to be difficult anyway. But um yeah, I, I think here we're going to see a lot of the kids. I think we'll see uh, Pape Matasar, obviously a guy who, who had a slight run out against Crystal Palace. I think he's a guy who will come in. Oliver Skip will come in. Jaffet Tanganga. So it is going to be a mix. So I think for Portsmouth, you know, they might could look at this and think, you know, Spurs are going to rotate and it's going to be kind of a mismatch of players that aren't used to playing with each other, maybe not too familiar with, with being in the first team. So I think Portsmouth could fancy themselves here. If you'd have asked me this um, prior to the, to the win at Crystal Palace, 
I, I, I really would have fancied Portsmouth here. They've just sacked their manager, Danny Cowley. Mm. They haven't been playing particularly well. They've sacked the whole but, family, haven't they? Yeah, but 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 having said that, I mean, you, you just never know. I mean, obviously, they haven't got in a new manager yet. But, you know, obviously, having maybe a change of manager, that could, you know, lift the players. Um, it, it's, it's still difficult to see this one. It's still a bit of a mismatch. And obviously, the mood has, has definitely improved um, after that big win against Crystal Palace. Um, the, the issue could be is there might be the stadium might be a little bit toxic because I don't know if you uh, you've seen or it's, it does seem to be pretty well um, kind of um, on social media and stuff. Um, we've seen you know Spurs aren't happy with the board at the moment. You know maybe a lack of you know the wrong investment, not backing Antonio Conte. So Spurs are unhappy at that. I think it's the, the the good thing for the board is that this is a nice fixture. It's you know it's the third round FA Cup tie. It's going to be mostly families at the stadium. So I don't think you're going to see maybe a particularly toxic atmosphere. And that might have kind of played into it. And obviously, we are coming to this, as I said, off the back of a, a nice win. Um, so I said, maybe if you'd asked me prior to the Crystal Palace um, game, I might have uh, backed a Portsmouth win here. But uh, no, I, I think Spurs should just about get the job done here. Hmm. Go on, um, give us a, a prediction. Um, I mean... I said I, I have I did actually speak about this game prior to, to the Crystal Palace game, and I did actually predict a, a Portsmouth win, but I think that the, the that has changed it. So I'm going to go for I'm going to go for I'm going to go for three one Spurs. I'm going to okay. go for three one Spurs. I think our defensive uh, I think defensively we have been pretty poor this season. I said we're going to maybe bring the likes of Tanganga Sanchez, who have been pretty shocking, and I can see Portsmouth getting on the score sheet. But uh, no, I do think we should just about the job done. And I really hope we do, because that could be quite embarrassing of us. <laughs> well, I'm sure we remind you next week if it is. Um, <laughs> Liam, handy for sports? Yeah, I think so. I think you opened the, up that question with about, you know, Spurs fans, I think, wanting to, to have a cup run. I think they need a cup run. They, they need that sort of excitement back in the club. You know, the last six months have been so inconsistent with what Conte's done not just his, you know, it's not his fault. Conte, it's just the way it's played out, and, and the players that they have or don't have, and injuries, and all these things just mount up. All these little things just mount up into such a big problem that's you know amplified on a weekly basis with the way games are run. You know, Tuesday, Saturdays. Um, the only way I can see this game potentially going to an upset is if Portsmouth score first and the crowd turns, because as you alluded to there, the crowd mm -hmm. has been hostile in recent weeks, and I know families will be there. It's an FA Cup. To Saturday lunchtime fixture, but even still, if Portsmouth nick a goal early on, you might just see a bit of hostility in the crowd, and that's going to put the players under pressure, especially those players who have underperformed and been incredibly inconsistent and on the receiving end of a hammering, you know, on a weekly basis. They might just start to crumble a little bit, um, and we've seen that on a regular basis. I've seen it at United on a regular basis over the last five years, and how much a crowd influences those players who are low on confidence. You can see it in Harry Maguire, you know, prior to the World Cup on, on what it's done to him over the last 12 months. Um, having said that, you just you just assume because obviously it's a Premier League team, top six team, massive club, um, that Spurs will get the job done, and I think they will get the job done. I, I thought, in particular, against um, against Palace, Brian Hill looked good. He looked really good, and that's the first time I've seen you know him actually express himself and have the ability to express himself. So I'd like to see him start again um, yeah. and and start to dict dictate the play. I don't know if Kane and Son will play or if that'll be rotated, but. Brian Hill looked, um, looked promising. So he needs yeah. a run of something, doesn't he, to get some confidence going. Mm. Yeah. What's your prediction? Uh, I'm going to go I'm gonna go 2-0 to Tottenham. I'm being safe. I'm going 2-0 to Tottenham. 2-0. Um, I think this is going to be a mad game. I think I think parts with losing their manager, they'll they go in with a standing manager. It might be an assistant or whoever it might be. That'll take over. And you might see a freedom from Portsmouth. And mm. I think that freedom from Portsmouth might actually end up hurting them. Um, I think that I think they might actually score first, but I think Spurs will have enough. Um, it's still Premier League against League One, isn't it? So, you know, big pitch at Spurs, big stadium. A lot of the players are parts of might have been in this position before, regardless of you know if there's sixty thousand in the ground or forty five thousand in the ground. A lot of them might have played in this sort of atmosphere. I think there is players at Spurs that kind of have to prove themselves. Brian will be in one of them, and there's others there for me, particularly at centre-back, that may end up with an opportunity, I suppose, because, like Jamie says, they've been poor at, they've been poor at the back. And I think centre-half haven't found the right mix for me um, this season when they're going to chop and change and 
Dyer is really good one week and he's not the next. And mm. you know, you're kind of going, there's just not maybe no consistency there with sports. They can have really good performance at the back and then and then they struggle. But I think it'll be a crazy game. I'm gonna go four two sports. I think wow. it's gonna be high, yeah, I think it's gonna be high score. And I think Parts will get a goal. I think they'll probably might get one or two, but Spurs will just you know, end up running over them and part of mm. grab on at the end. Um, I, I, do, I do fear that, with, as Liam said, you know, if we were to concede first, I, I just fear, I do fear about the atmosphere. I mean, I said it's, I think there is kind of that, um, there will be a lot of families there. So I, I think they are safe with that. Mm. They are safe that they have just picked up that, um, that big win, you know, but maybe had it been a Premier League fixture or, you know, had it been a, you know, um, you know said, yeah, Premier League fixture, I think they could have been in a bit of trouble and we hadn't have got that win against Crystal Palace. Yeah, yeah, the atmosphere would not be a particularly nice place. It wasn't very nice against Aston Villa either in that 2-0 yeah. defeat at home. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I do fear the worst if uh, if Ports were to score first. Well, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that game over the weekend with you in mind, um, whatever mm. way the fourth goal goes, and I'll make sure <laughs> to mention it next Thursday. Um, we're going to leave it there. Um, that's loads of games we've covered. The, the tie of the weekend for me is probably Cardiff against Leeds, though. Um, because they traditionally don't like each other. Um, it's at Cardiff. Um, it's it'll be full. It'll be loud. Um, from both ends because Leeds will get a massive allocation there as well. So that's one to watch you over the weekend. Cardiff against Leeds. Um, I've been Gav. That's been Liam. That's been Jamie. That's been the Premier League preview show from uh, Bookmakers TV. Make sure to like. Make sure to subscribe when you watch. And then we'll check it out next week. Talk to you in a bit.